Well, let me bring you the latest on the Australia bushfires. Authorities are urging people living in areas that are under threat to leave or risk becoming trapped. That warning has extra urgency because more hot, dry weather is coming. We know in Victoria a state of disaster has been declared and these are the fire warnings there. Red is extreme, orange is severe and yellow is very high, so almost the entire state is affected by that. I also want to update you on Kangaroo Island. It's just off the coast of South Australia. The situation there is pressing. As you can see from this image, the army's now being called in. Soldiers are knocking on doors, telling people to leave. And this is the latest fire map on the island. Areas that have already been burnt out are marked in blue. The area in red is where an emergency warning is in place. Yellow means watch and act. That means an emergency is nearby and to be vigilant. The mayor of Kangaroo Island has been tweeting about the situation, saying this is hell on earth here. 3 a.m., the fire is still roaring and a few kilometres from the airport. We are dead beat, he says. More broadly, fires are burning out of control across three states in the southeast of the country. Across Australia, 27 people have been killed and more than 2,000 homes have been destroyed. The Prime Minister says the threat is far from over. I would encourage all Australians to continue to, to follow the advice of authorities, to um, keep being kind to each other as the way you are. Thank you for your generosity and your support. All levels of government will keep working to ensure that we come through this together by staying together. Let's turn to a place called Nowra in New South Wales. Lucy Hawkins is there. There are over a hundred fires still burning here in New South Wales, so there's a real concern about what the hot, windy weather will bring in the next few days. Fires are a natural part of Australian life, but everyone here has been shocked by the ferocity of this year's season. Architect Nick Turner spent years designing and building a beautiful garden and home in the Kangaroo Valley. He knew that this day would one day come. He sheltered with eight of his neighbours in his home and watched a cyclonic firestorm head towards his house. This is the story of how he and his neighbours survived and his home. We saved the house and the house saved us. And that was a nexus that, if it had broken at any point, would have meant that we would have perished. The, the air was like if you're in a, a very big thunderstorm, but instead of sheets of water, it was sheets of embers and looked like fire as a glow through the air. And the horizontal rain was horizontal burning pieces of wood flying through the air and leaves. And the strength of the wind was just incredible. Well, next to a place called Tomorong in New South Wales, Jonathan Head is there. In the fire-bleached bush along Australia's southeastern coast, Gary Simpson's backyard has taken a beating. Some of his tallest trees, badly charred, have had to be felled and dragged a safe distance from his house. He's been clearing up ever since a raging fire swept through last Saturday and preparing for more fires once the weather heats up again. This was what was happening here last weekend. The whole forest around his house was ablaze. At one stage I said, this doesn't look good. This whole area is awash with flames. It's a pretty scary feeling. Yeah, it can be scary, yeah, most definitely. We've been very lucky. We saved the houses where people down the, down the coast, on the south coast of New South Wales, have been completely devastated. They, they've got only the clothes that they stand in, and that's, whew, that's a horrible thing. Well, of course, there's an urgency at the moment because the fires continue to burn, but some of the problems being created are going to take years to resolve. Next, we go to a town called Batlow. Again in New South Wales, it was hit last weekend and at least 17 houses were lost. This is one farmer in the area. That's the most distressing thing I think for most farmers uh, is the loss of livestock. We had just a small group of 140 sheep. Uh, we lost half of them. Uh, we had to shoot a few ourselves. Um, the veterinary services euthanized another 30. Um, they were very kind and got us to stay up the, up the house and we counted the gunshots as they finished them off. Our neighbour had 50-odd cows, he's got three left. 
Well, this bushfire crisis has put huge attention on Australia's fossil fuel industry. There's no doubt that this crisis is so severe, in part because Australia has been getting hotter across the last century. And that shift is caused by global climate change, which in turn is caused by human behaviour, not least emissions from fossil fuels. And they're worth a lot to Australia. You can see from this graphic, it's the third biggest fossil fuel exporter in the world. Coal exports were, exports were worth more than 47 billion US dollars in the last financial year, and the industry provides around 50,000 jobs. The governing coalition, led by the Liberal Party, is seeking what Prime Minister Scott Morrison calls a balance between reducing emissions and supporting the industry. For the Liberals, that means a number of things, including the government signing off a new coal mine further north from New South Wales in Queensland. The then Resources Minister at the time argued that there was a strong moral case for exporting coal to developing countries. So if that's export, then there's domestic energy use. This is a recent report from the Clean Energy Council, a renewable energy lobby, telling us that fossil fuels made up 79% of Australia's total electricity generation in 2018. The equivalent figure in the UK was about 40%. And if that's the government's approach, well, this is the leader of the opposition Labour Party. The road to a low carbon future can be paved with literally hundreds of thousands of clean energy jobs, as well as supporting traditional jobs, including coal mining. Clean energy jobs, coal jobs, jobs all around, we'll see. This is from the organisation Carbon Brief. It has an analysis of all of the party's policies on energy and climate change from last year's election. In it, Labour confirms the inevitability of transition from coal and it says we need a plan to support workers and communities affected but there's little detail on how it will force through the move away from fossil fuels and it's been keen to be seen to be supportive of coal here's a picture released by the minerals council of australia showing four labor mps getting a tour of some mines last year as in many other places in the world short-term politics and long-term climate policy still sit uneasily in australia both parties appear in their different ways, familiar with trying to have your cake and eating it too. As for the Minerals Council of Australia, we asked for an interview, but it declined.